It's actually called Thoda Records, but I have to say this disclaimer. We, we uh, chose the name and branded it and did everything before the Thoda happened. Uh, just because I think... You predicted it, basically. I predicted the Thoda. <laughs> Hi, Samir. Hi, Lynn. It's so nice to have you in our office in gloomy Beirut, unfortunately, today. Uh, more popularly, you're known as Etienne. That's your stage, stage name, name, if we can say so. Uh, of today, course you can say so. <laughs> today, I'm with you to talk about Thoda Records. Yes. So, for our followers that don't know what Thoda Records is, could you please give us a brief introduction? Yes. Awachi, <laughs> bonjour. Um, so yeah, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, so Thaura Records is um, the label that I founded in 2019. Uh, and it's actually called Thaura Records, but it has nothing to do with Thaura per se, which happened also in 2019. We actually came up, this, I have to say this disclaimer, we, we uh, chose the name and branded it and did everything before the Thaura happened. Uh, just because I think... You predicted it, basically. I predicted Thoda. the Thoda. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, the idea behind Thoda Records is that as a label, it's not this company that's coming in with like shit tons of money and trying to do things in a, like the way that it is done in the industry where, you know, it's, it, it's a very indie, organic label that grew out of uh, necessity for me personally as an artist to see an industry developing around me in my local community because that was lacking and it's still lacking today. I mean, of course, after 2019 and 2020, everything that happened uh, really took us back mm -hmm. in many ways in the industry. But uh, yeah, so Thoda Records is our uh, record label. It's a digital label right now. We haven't actually physically made vinyls or anything like that yet. Um, and uh, yeah, I founded it in 2019, before the Thaura. You can check the Facebook uh, <laughs> date of the page. Uh, and the idea behind it was to basically, uh, all the knowledge that I had acquired as an artist, as Etienne, over the last 10 years uh, in the industry abroad, apply that here, try to make a label that works for local artists, that pushes them without trying to be uh, you know, controlling uh, their creativity or anything like that while offering, um, you know, the support to develop artists that need it, wherever areas we can help, basically. Um, and on terms that are very, like, fair to artists, because I'm an artist myself, so I've seen how, like, labels abroad, even very small to medium labels that aren't really, like, giving so much money to the artists or doing anything like that, they'll still take a very big percentage uh, from royalties. So I was trying to create a sort of um, formula for a record label that would be indie while also be able to you know, work together on projects that aren't just like, oh, we're just going to put out some music, like actually shine the light on important projects that are discussing important themes or where the music is like, uh, you know, looking towards the future and trying to to put Lebanon on the map, in a sense. Okay. So sorry, that was a very long no, answer to a, a very really short question. You actually covered some of my other questions, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, okay. So I was wondering, since it came up before the Thaura, why did you choose the name Thaura? So, um, so Thaura, the idea of a revolution, it was... Uh, and it's like the first post we post, yeah, like it's our, uh, how do you say, the manifesto of the label, is that the idea is we're not gonna follow any rules. We're not gonna like try to work within the structure that is imposed by the music industry. Rather just, uh, so it's a, it's a revolution in a sense, uh, musically or, or even in the in the in the process of how we work and the ethos of the label where it's going against the we're not following the norm we're not gonna try to compromise for anything so the artistic vision of the artists that we work with it, it's completely this is the most important thing for us so Thaura comes from that and us as a label uh, yeah I think 
that's kind of the point. I wish I had the text that uh, the <laughs> manifesto that we wrote. I would have answered that much more like concisely. Is it available on the website? <laughs> yeah, it's actually on the website, yeah. Okay, so yeah, for yeah. anyone that's interested, they can just go onto the website and check it out. Yeah, and you can check out our music also on that website. I'm sure they will <laughs> after, after this interview. <laughs> um, so you covered quite a lot of ground actually concerning the label, but I was wondering, yes. how do you support the artists that you're working with right now? We, first of all, if we see something that, that they're doing that we like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to, s to, we'll work together to see where we can fit as a label. Because different people have different needs, you know. And as a label, I'm not interested and we're not interested in coming in and being like, oh, okay, we're going to, you know, just sign over all the rights to your music to us and we'll do everything and blah, blah, blah. Because that's not how it works. Yeah. At least how I've seen how it, sh how it works, especially with indie musicians and an indie label like us. So it's really just one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. It's kind of rigid in the traditional structure of indie labels. Yeah, like definitely. The way it starts. So is it more of a collaborative effort between For you and the sure, artists? For sure, that's exactly what it is. So, so again, in terms of like uh, the deals that we offer to artists, mm -hmm. we have this conversation before we even sign or do anything or even like decide on, yeah, we're going to do this or do that. Uh, we have a conversation to see, first of all, you know, um, because as a label, we don't have that like huge amount of funds. So some people reach out and they're like, "Oh, can you like, would you be interested in this?" And I'm looking for a label to like s to fund me and mm -hmm. blah blah blah. We can't really fund artists uh, that easily. So we try to work with those artists to like find funds for their projects, etc. Um, and sometimes it's more about if the artist can afford uh, to fund certain parts of their release, then we'll still work with them and. Uh, on a lower percentage basis or whatever, you know, like mm -hmm. we try to see, okay, what can you do and what do you need from us? The more that we need to do, obviously the more that, but it's always a conversation because the idea is okay. not to like take away the rights or take away blah, blah. And it's, it's not about exploiting the artist. It's about if the artist, as, as much as the artist wants to be engaged and uh, what they can, uh, like we'll decide together what we can afford and what we can do and who we can reach out to because at the end of the day, a music release uh, has a lot of, there's a lot of stages to it. So there is, of course, the creation and the finalization, and there is, of course, the distribution of its stores and all that, but without marketing and PR and being smart about that, because you could easily come and be a label that throws like $10,000 on each release or something like that. If you have that money, great. But at the same time, depending on, depending on an artist where they are in their career, if they've had a past, a journey, a story, you can, it's, you can build on that. So uh, if they don't, and it's their first release, it doesn't make sense to like go crazy on throwing you know, money around on things that won't necessarily bring back uh, a lot of engagement or whatever it is, you know? So Actually, it's very interesting to see how you guys have grown so naturally. Like just trying to fill these small gaps that you've realized in the music industry in Lebanon. Sure. Um, definitely, you've raised some great points about the fact that the music industry in Lebanon is usually struggling because it's notoriously underfunded. Artists usually have to bond together and create a support system for each other so they can grow their fan bases, produce music, release music. Um, so considering all of these challenges, what's it like operating a small scale digital label in Lebanon? It must be challenging, I imagine. Apart from the life thing, but uh, the other side that is about the recording industry. So putting out music, CDs, vinyls, whatever that is, you know, like record labels and then publishing and then having, for example, we don't have a national organization that goes and collects public performance royalties for songwriters. Every other country in the world has. Uh, what I'm talking about is like the equivalent of SASEM or mm -hmm. PRS UK or uh, ASCAP in the US. Mm -hmm. So these people are actually what publishing is about. So the music publishing yeah. side of things. So those national organizations that represent songwriters, musicians, unions, all these things, they're lacking. We don't have that. That's infrastructure. Without that, everything else doesn't really grow because yeah. you need to have... You're lacking a basis, basically. Yeah, you're lacking the basis for the artists who are actually creating this music. So great, there's the club culture. There is some live av uh, venues and stuff like that where you're able to expose artists and all that. But there isn't the other fundamental part where artists and songwriters and people who are working in music, uh, they can have access to this 
whole uh, pot of money that would be owed to them or would allow them to have a sustainable career in music in Lebanon. Yeah. Which is sort of from where the label came, basically. So the label came from that. So after years of me being an indie artist, I found that, okay, we don't have any publishing here. Many of the people around me, even people I collaborate with, are not registered as songwriters. They're not, there's no one protecting them and their rights you know, mm -hmm. or, or I see a lot of people releasing independently, but they don't really know what they're doing, or, or, you know, like they'd be doing great music, but it's not really reaching anyone or getting into the right ears because they're not understanding how to trick, or not trick, but it's like, you need to have an understanding of how the music industry worldwide works in terms of what I talked about, the streaming and all that, like how to break into playlisting, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. And, and Saura and the idea of how we're working is, yes, it's a revolution against that thought of like, oh, you have to mainstreamize stuff for it yeah. to work. You have to create content online. No, no, your songs should not be six minutes long. We don't care about things like that. We want to preserve the creative artistic integrity of the artist. Basically going against the grain of everything that the music industry stands for. Yes and no, because in the end of the day, for you to beat the system, you have to work within the system, you know what I mean? So it's not about beating mm -hmm. the system or anything like that. I don't want to make it like sound too dramatic, but it's just <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But it's just like, um, it's just about we're trying to create what there is abroad, you know, which is now also online, so we, everyone has access to it. But mm -hmm. how to have access to it in a fair way here and give it access to, these, to the artists around me that don't know what they're doing and don't know how to have access to that and don't know how to, like, there's all these opinions that you hear all the time and don't release albums, release singles, do this, do that, do that, but none of that matters as long as you have a proper understanding of how the industry works and how you can grow within an industry and how you can actually become, a, like how you can make a sustainable living as an artist, which is what I've done. Like that's, I've been lucky to arrive at that point. Mm -hmm. So in 2019, I had arrived at a point where I had already been just making music. Like that was my entire life. I don't have another job. Like I make my living from the music industry. So I had arrived at that point, having done a show for Netflix, the music for Netflix, having had pitched, uh, had music of mine used in film, etc. I saw that, okay, there's this whole other side, the songwriting, the publishing. That's another funnel of money that yeah. people are missing out on, you know? Uh, releasing music without really trying to activate connections with the DSPs, which are the stores like Spotify and Rami, all these people, you know? is also a mistake because they're controlling everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, so yeah. So I don't know if that answers the question. I feel it like does, every, it does every, every, the question. every question I'm answering the same <laughs> question. No, you keep opening up again like more again. doors for me to go into. <laughs> you spoke a lot about finances, which yeah. is a very interesting topic considering the country is in the midst of a financial collapse. Oh, yes. Uh, actually, I remember part of your question before was yeah. very hard to operate a label now. And definitely, it's so hard with the economic crisis happening because since everything is digital now, I mean, not everything is digital, but in the digital world or you know, in the online world now, um, and us here in Lebanon, we're like, you know, we're like, as a label, we are sort of like all these businesses in Lebanon that have to deal with mainly just people abroad. So if we're going to master, so of course, there, are, there is like mastering engineers, mixing engineers that we work with here, you know, yeah. but then if you want, uh, so sometimes you're going to master with someone that for a specific type of music that's abroad, mm -hmm. they're going to charge you in fresh dollar or, you know, not fresh in their case, it's just dollars yeah. <laughs> in real for dollars. For us, it's fresh know? dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it smells so fresh for us, but for them, <laughs> they have it all the time. So they're going to charge in foreign currency. Uh, so as a label, our whole, especially now that we've grown to a medium label, so we are like we have a lot of artists now on the label that we are paying out money to, that we are accounting to. Uh, there's a lot of technology that we need as a label to function. Speci this technology, especially to produce electronic music, you need a lot of. Oh sure, I'm not even talking about the production <laughs> stuff. But yes, hey, if you want to buy like a ten dollar VST, you know, something that you need for your production and your music, whatever, or even if you need to buy a piece of gear, you know, things yeah. are like five hundred, eight hundred, one thousand dollars. It's expensive running yeah, a label. It's course. expensive being a musician. Now it's insanely expensive. But of course, you know, if you can afford it, then good on you. 
But, uh, but yeah, but apart from that, just like as a label, the expenses that incur. So if, if you're going to run a PR campaign, you have to pay a PR agency. The PR agency is not based in Lebanon. We're not running PR, Lebanese PR, you know. And that's, yeah. uh, there's no industry for that here, like to run uh, uh, on LBC, you're going to have music a... Music PR. Yeah. A for, you know, so we work with international PR companies to get the music into radio internationally. To get, of course, we run PR campaigns locally to the relevant medias, you know, the independent medias that cover yeah. the type of music that we do and all that, and the radios, of course. But uh, when you're going to work with a PR company internationally, of course, the fees are in uh, foreign currency. Has that been a strain on the label? It is, in a way, yes, because you can release... So in the beginning, when we first started, the problem wasn't yet that apparent. Mm -hmm. um, so we were actually mastering music abroad okay but then you know if you're mastering for like 40 bucks a track or 50 dollars a song that amounts to a lot eventually you know of course we 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 don't compromise on quality or something like that you know so we were able to find someone that was really good here uh who was mastering our tracks for that those that year or two um so yeah there's ways to like work around that but definitely um it's not easy uh, given everything that's happened. And then, yeah, so in the first year, we released like 10 releases. The second year, we released only six. Yeah. Because, also because we had started to grow, so we were putting in more money on our releases from the label. So in our first releases, which were mainly my EP, yeah. and, and of course our friends, and Jad Talib, and Jade, and then it just started to grow where there were so many artists now on the label, and uh, of course, you know, like a two-track EP will cost more, much less than promoting and PRing and releasing and creating yeah. content and all this stuff than an album or whatever, you know. But yeah, definitely, most of the money that we have to spend is in foreign currency. Uh, but also the money that we make is in foreign currency, so that's the only good side. Except the money we make from streaming and, and things like that is, you know, as everyone knows, labels worldwide uh, do not really make that much money, mm -hmm. you know, from streaming. Like, of course, you have to try to do live stuff, etc. Which was also, you know, sort of the vision in the beginning, and it still is. But with everything that was happening and COVID and things like that, so we've never, we have yet to do like a label showcase or expand into ways where we can generate some additional funds to help us fund more of our artists and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. been a bit difficult. You've name dropped some artists that you've worked with, so Jade and Jad Talib, and you yeah. yourself have worked with the label, obviously, it's, of it's your it's label. It's my label. <laughs> yeah. um, name drop some other artists that you've also worked with. Uh, right now, I'm really excited about the recent releases we put out, mm -hmm. which was a collaboration with Found Sound Nation. So Thaura Records, it's called the Thaura, the Thaura Records and Found Sound Nation core release series. And okay. what we did was, uh, we, we, we spent last, the end of last year preparing these three releases that we put out and they just came out last month, all of them. So they were released two weeks apart. Okay. And the first one was Medina Min Ba'id, the single by Maysa Jalad and Khalid Allaf. Yeah. And uh, so I'm name dropping Maysa Jalad, <laughs> who uh, I'm, I was very lucky to like, uh, I've known her for a long time, of course, and I've She's always been, around on I've the always been a big a fan. Yeah, definitely. Well. I've always been a very big fan of her, and I, I've always thought that she was one of the best singers, honestly. Like, her voice, for me personally, is one of the most beautiful voices I've heard. And as a songwriter, she's an amazing songwriter, like, really uh, mature so, uh, in her songwriting. And uh, so we were so lucky to start working together on the label recently through this collaboration. Um, and uh, that's one artist that I'm very excited about. Of course, Khaled Alaf as well. Uh, other artists we've worked with, we've worked with a lot of people so far. Pam Rouge, mm -hmm. very good friends of mine. Also, sort of, sort of in the label. Like, they're not officially employed, but they help sort out a of. lot. <laughs> we'll see how that works out in the future. Pam Rouge, who else? Uh, we've had some really nice artists on the label, I think. Okay. So, <laughs> if you go on thaurarecords.com, you'll find everything there. Okay. But you can go to YouTube, Thaura Records. And there's the music video of Maysa Jalad, uh, which was by Il Eli Dagher, mm -hmm. who is an uh, award-winning filmmaker, anima animator, I guess. I don't want to say it wrong. Filmmaker. <laughs> uh, and then Adam Jamal did the music video for Bada Ab, which Bada Ab, again, is on Tiny House Music, our sub-label. But it's, um, 
and Maisa Jalad's on that EP. And if you haven't heard it, and you were in Lebanon when the explosion happened, you should really go and listen to it. It's the most mature, in my opinion, uh, interpretation of like that trauma into a, okay. an, an artistic medium. The first song, it's called Bikhair, and it's about the explosion, but it's like the most mature interpretation I've heard of yeah. that event, and it's so beautiful. Maisa Jalad singing again. The band is like a super group. It's Maisa Jalad, Umayya Malaab from Mashra Layla, Dani Shukri from Tanjal yeah. al and Ezra Tenenbaum, who's a from Very Sound interesting Mission. mix of people, actually. Yeah. Like all from different walks of life. For sure, for sure. Um, if you were to come up with a playlist for us, mm -hmm. which three songs would you include? Actually, I'm going to let you choose six songs <laughs> on one condition yes. that three of them should not have anything to do with Thoda Records. Okay. Ah, okay. So you want three songs from the, th from the label yes. and then three songs not from the label? Yes. Okay. And is there a theme to these songs? Or no, no, just whatever you think would fit with Beirut today. Like now that you've met me, what, mm, what, which three okay. songs would you recommend to me? Uh, all right. So uh, I need to think about this. There's so much <laughs> music on my mind right now. Uh, okay, so if I was to recommend three songs that have nothing to do with Thawra, um there is this what was it called? There is a song recently that I was that I was listening to that sort of like blew my mind. I have I, I don't usually get blown away. Um, it's by an artist called Mustelide. She's um, I think if I'm not mistaken, Belarusian Belarusian <laughs> uh, musician, electronic artist, or Ukrainian. I'm very sorry if I got that wrong. Um, and the song is, uh, I can't remember the title, but it is basically, um, it's, I can find the title after this and show it to you. I'll include the title. <laughs> I'll okay, tell great. The title but the artist is Mustelide, and it's uh, a song that this artist made from just samples of broken instruments. Um, mm -hmm. And it was part of a project uh, called the a Symphony for Broken Orchestra um, Remixes which actually Found Sound Nation was a part of somehow. And I also did a song, so that's another song that I'll choose, which is not on Thawra, but it's my song. And it's called Elephant in the Room by Etienne, which is me. Uh, and it's exactly that concept. It's all made from the sounds of broken instruments. So we both actually use the same sort of inspiration. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so Mustelide is the artist. I have to remember the name of the song. And then the other song is Elephant in the Room by me. That's how conceited I am. I immediately <laughs> include my own song. In the but no, but just because they're tied thematically. I mean, uh, you have another the right song to include your own song <laughs> in this playlist. But, and that one's not on Thoda, so you can't hold me accountable. I'm, I'm not holding you to it. Uh, another song, what other songs? Uh, you should have asked me this before our interview, so I could have some time to So make. you can prepare it. No, yeah, that's no, the I'm thing. Kidding. Okay, okay. You have to prepare it right now. Um, there's a song by Maisa Jalad. It's not on Thawra. It's called Dahaliz. I really hope I'm getting that right. Uh, I don't think it's out. She performed it live with Khaled Alaf, but it's a part of her album. And it just knocked me out. It's an insane song. It's so beautiful, the version that they did live. Uh, you won't be able to find that one yet. It's not out. Sorry. Um, Maisa, release this, please. <laughs> she will soon. Uh, another song I can suggest... Uh, sorry, I didn't sleep well. It's my, okay. my mind palace is falling apart. <laughs> um, what else? Let me think. What's a nice song I've heard recently? Uh, you can edit this whole <laughs> part until we find it. Uh, I would say Oh My God by Sevdaliza. Mm -hmm. song that I love. Gets stuck in my head every once in a while. Really interesting choice. I love Sabdaliza. <laughs> but it's not everyone's cup of tea, which is a very interesting mix of music, actually, that you've included for us. Um, Did you want me to name three from the label? Because you said six. You can name three from the label, yes. Uh, I don't need to, but I mean, if you want me to. I mean, <laughs> it's your label. <laughs> this is what the interview Okay, is sure. About. So three, or actually, if you want, or yeah, okay. So three other songs you should check out are, or, you know, that 
I think would fit this conversation or whatever, maybe. Uh, definitely Medina Man Baid, because you mentioned it. By message that Khaled I love. Um, I think sort of overlooked, not overlooked, but like from last two years, um, the um, Beirut remixed album that we put out. The Jade remix is obviously everybody knew uh, and loved. But it's uh, Jad Talib. Ah, actually, no, not that. Jad Talib's transitory EP, which was one of our first releases, actually. Uh, I, th I love it so much. I still like it, like, love it to this day. So transitory by Jad Talib. Check it out. One of our first releases. So I wouldn't say overlooked, but, you know, not as much like we still didn't have that much uh, experience and doing things. And then your final song. And the final, final song. Uh, LM, No Man's Land. It's a song that's not on Thaura. It's on Tiny House Music. It's an artist that I've been producing and I co-wrote. So it's Amanda Shamas, this uh, Lebanese French singer. Uh, she's amazing. We wrote songs together like children, basically. Like they came out. Uh, and we're releasing her album on Tiny House Music, which is Thoughted Records in a way. Uh, so it's not out yet. But No Man's Land is out. It's a single that came out two years ago that is the basis for the entire album. And I'm so excited about her album, actually. It's one of like our the things that we've been working on so much. It's done completely. Now we're like doing a music video. Gonna really like... So we should stay tuned, basically. Stay tuned to that. <laughs> Very subtle but you can to already to stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> but you can already check out one of the songs, which is No Man's Land by LM. It's available everywhere already. Okay. So those are my six songs. Thank you so much for this lovely interview. It was so cool listening to the process, listening to your process as well, and how you've been helping artists. Thank you um, so much for having me. Sorry if I spoke a lot. No, I think you covered quite a <laughs> interesting ground. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Lynn. And thank you, Beirut, today for having me. <laughs> <laughs>